Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. And thank you to those of you who have supported my channel by liking and subscribing. Your support allows me to continue to bring you fountain pen reviews as I am unsponsored on this channel, so thanks. The last time I played Back in Black, it was for this Conklin Durograph, an all black pen except for the rose gold. The pen today is very stealthy in black on black on black. I have Midnight Black, Raven Black, Liquid uh, Black. Mickey was here with her black and blue black. Twelve inches. Oh, you way off. I bet you can't even see it. It is a Hongdian 6013 General Black fountain pen with a black Fude nib. It's a good thing I'm wearing black today because it will illustrate how stealthy this pen is. I bet you can't see it. If you're planning any black ops where you need to make notes in kanji, this is the pen for you. Wake up. Wake up. Where am I? Where's Reznov? I'm told this pen is a copy of the Faber-Castell E-Motion. Here's a photograph of the Faber-Castell E-Motion, and I can tell you that if Hongdian wanted to copy the E-Motion, they did a pretty poor job of it. The clip is different, the section is different, the emotion is five grams heavier and two millimeters thicker. Maybe Moon Man should try to copy the emotion. Oh wait, Moon Man is Hongdian. And Hongdian is Moon Man, or is that Fan Moo is Moon Man? I'm so confused. What's the matter, Pop? I'm confused. In any event, you won't find me going to my local pen shop and buying a $200 slippery German 55 gram metal pen just to compare with this $20 Chinese non-copy. If you want to send me some German emotion, you'd better do it right now. And it is new pen day again today, only this is an NCPD, a new Chinese pen day. This packet arrived in the mail, and I ordered this because I reviewed a couple of Hongdian pens recently, and they were actually fairly good quality. And then I saw this uh, uh, Black Forest Hongdian that everybody was raving about, but it looked pretty slim to me. Uh, and then I saw this General Black, and I'm not sure whether General Black is a person or whether that's a color, but it looked a little fatter, and it looked, and it reminded me of another pen and I asked people on my video what that pen might be and they told me it was the Faber-Castell E-Motion. So I'm not planning on getting all emotional about this or buying a Faber-Castell E-Motion to compare to this pen but let's take a look at it anyway. And it's in a nice crinkly condom. And, ooh, it's very satiny. And this uh, texture on here, I actually thought was crosshatched. A little bit deeper than that. You can see that texture right there. You can hardly feel it. That's very nice. And here's the clip that uh, is controversial. And it is a bit heftier and a little thicker in the hand than uh, people had suggested it was. I'm uh, happy about that because I wasn't looking forward to a thin pen. And of course it's a Fude nib, not a mini Fude, but a real Fude. We shall clean this pen out and ink it up. I have to think about what color. I don't know. What do you folks think? I'll have to decide on what color. Maybe a red or a blue or an orange or something. God forbid it be black. And we will do a full review. The Hongdian 6013. And what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. And after the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this pen. I can't help but think Hongdian might have come up with a better name or color than General Black. He sounds so generic. It might have been more interesting as General Plaid or General Polka Dot. 
Not to mention General Patton. What about General MacArthur Park? General Knowledge, perhaps. Of course, maybe the best name for a food a pen is General Foods. Overall, this is a very black and hefty fountain pen weighing it at almost 50 grams. It is solid in the hand. From the top, we see a flat finial with a round black dot, and the cap tapers up to a seam, which is part of the clip assembly. And there's the rest of the cap, which tapers up uh, to here, and then it's straight to the end of the cap. It's interesting that the cap finial and clip are one color matte black, and the rest of the cap and end finial are another color black. Maybe my camera isn't picking it up, but it is this part here is a warmer black than that. And let's look at the clip for a moment. From the side, it really has a nice double curved wave to it and a nice flip up at the end so you can get under it. And from the front, it has a really nice taper. But where you'd expect to be able to press on the top of this clip to open it, no such luck. It doesn't move. You have to really uh, clamp on it. Well, it doesn't move. Uh, this way, it actually moves very nicely. You can see it pivot inside that uh, cap finial. So it's spring-loaded in some way or another, but it's just not counter-levered, so you can actually use it with one hand. And I'm just noticing now, mine has a divot out of it. Or, no, it's some kind of paint. Let's see whether I can dislodge it. Yep, that was a flake of black paint that was in there. So the clip actually works very nicely uh, when you pull on it normally, but you can't use it as a one-handed thing. And it also tends to jiggle side to side quite dramatically. At the end of the cap, we see some elaborate engraving. There's no model number or text or anything, or even brand name on this, but it's uh, certainly very, very interesting scroll work. It almost looks like a, a bird that way. Maybe it's supposed to be two facing birds or a dragon or some kind of a hieroglyph. I don't know. Maybe that's uh, General Black right there, giving me the old stink eye. There's a very small step down to the barrel, which is metal but coated with a rubbery material which has a light crosshatch pattern in it. The barrel tapers down to a black metal end finial and a flat end. This barrel material is much smoother and grippier uh, than it looks like in the photographs. The cap snaps off to reveal a black metal tapering section with a small lip towards a number five size black steel food nib and black plastic feed. The nib and the feed are part of a collar assembly uh, that unscrew very, very easily uh, for replacement. And I've seen replacement nibs for this and other Hongdian pens on Etsy in black, blue, silver, and gold colors. Let's get a closer look at this nib. The nib has some border scroll work and the Hongdian logo and 1997 18 KGP. I don't believe that 18 karat gold plated indication at all. If anything, that steel nib is plated in general black. The section unscrews to reveal an included converter, and the pen will also take Lamy long cartridges and Parker short cartridges, as well as a second Parker short cartridge in the barrel piggyback. It also accepts pen BBS converters. Where the barrel and the section meet, there is a small black silicone o-ring which seems to be standard equipment on Hongdian. We can see the top of the barrel is where the branding of this pen is and it says Hong Dian with the Hongdian logo in the center and the model number 
on the back, 6013. The inside of the cap shows a black plastic cap liner. The cap posts deeply, but surprisingly not securely. It feels like it should be on there securely, especially with that rubberized body on there, but any good amount of uh, movement with your hand and it drops right off. You really have to turn that barrel into the cap to make it secure, and then you run the risk of damaging that rubber on there. I haven't seen any indication of that, but the amount of screwing you have to do to get in there uh, makes me worry. That's what she said. And when it is posted like this, the pen is plenty long enough, but that cap is so heavy that it back weights the pen in your hand, and you have to move your grip up a bit to balance the pen. Unposted, the pen is on the border of being too short, but I can write with it like this, and that tapered metal section makes it uh, rather slippery, and my fingers slide down towards that uh, nib. So I have to move my grip back so my thumb's on that rubberized barrel, which actually gives me some gripping power there. There is a small step down from the barrel to the section, but it's not obtrusive at all. I bought this pen from Easy Buy on Etsy for $17.58 US, and it came with either an extra fine or a fine Fude nib. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Hongdian 6013 with a Hongdian 525, a Lamy Studio Palladium, a Wingsong 601 Flighter, and a Hero 9315. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. And these are all steel nibs except for the Lamy Studio Palladium, which is a 14 karat gold uh, nib. And of course on the Wingsong 601 Flighter, uh, this pen doesn't come with this uh, hood on it. I put that stainless steel hood on there as an extra. And now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Hongdian 6013 with a fine steel Fude nib. Let's check the wetness. This nib is very wet, which is good because it, this nib will lay down a lot of ink. And the ink today is a sort of 50-50 mix of J. Urbain, Stormy Gray, and Hiroshizuku Takisume. I filled it first with the stormy gray, but didn't like how very transparent the ink looked. It wasn't dark enough, so I dumped half of the converter of ink back into the bottle and topped it up with Takisume and shook up the pen a bit. What I have now is some of the gold glitter from the stormy gray but a lot of the charcoal darkness from the Takisume, and I much prefer it this way. Here is a screen capture of some close matches to both Stormy Gray here and the Orochizuku Takisume from Inkswatch.com. Let's look at the line variation possible uh, from this pen. If you hold the pen completely vertically, 90 degrees, you get a very, very fine line. And the more that you tilt the pen, the thicker the line becomes and the wetter because more of the nib, of that bent nib, comes in contact with the paper. And of course, there's variation between vertical strokes 
and horizontal strokes, which changes depending on your pen angle as well. The lower your pen angle, the thicker the line is. So comparing the range of line thicknesses to my Richard Binder chart, the thinnest line I can get is that vertical stroke with the pen 90 degrees, and it is 0.2 millimeters, or a Western triple X fine, and a Japanese extra extra fine. And the thickest line with the vertical stroke I can get there is a 1.2 millimeter line, which is a Western triple broad, and we're off the chart in terms of the uh, Japanese line thickness. The thickest horizontal stroke I can get with the pen down at a low angle here is about two millimeters which is off the chart completely and we're in paintbrush territory and that's actually what's interesting about this uh, Houdé nib is the huge line variation that you can get depending on your pen angle and these tend to behave more like paint brushes than writing nibs if you move the pen with a lot of the Fude flat part touching the page you get a, a pretty rough line it kind of breaks up and feathers which is very much like a paintbrush. This may be very advantageous depending on what you're doing. Uh, writing notes or a letter, probably not so much. But if you were sketching or writing Eastern character calligraphy, uh, say something like this, which uh, is Chinese for courage. Why do you have the Chinese character for soup tattooed on your right buttock? It's not soup, it's courage. No, it isn't. But I suppose it does take courage to demonstrate that kind of commitment to soup. <laughs> so this nib would be very useful. I find it fascinating. Um, but until my first kanji lessons, uh, I might not be writing with this pen too much. But I'm glad of the experience, and uh, I may give it a go in a birthday card or something like that where a unique script might be cool. And for our quote, And for some reverse writing, you can turn that nib over, but as you can see, it catches in the paper and is very, very dry. And some quick writing. This is a very, very wet brush. So, what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, let's talk about the pen itself first, and then the special nib after. This pen is stealthy black and very cool looking. And being black on black, they haven't made the mistake of making the shapes plain. Quite on the contrary, the wavy clip and the symmetrical curves uh, with the textured rubber barrel uh, give the pen some very interesting various shades of black. Plus, I like the fact that it's thicker than the other Hongdian pens I've seen. That was one of the reasons I chose this model over the Black Forest Hongdian. That being said, this pen is very heavy at almost 50 grams. The clip is too stiff to work with one hand, and the barrel doesn't post uh, securely uh, at all. Uh, you have to pretty much crank it on there and twist it on there, so I worry about that surface getting uh, 
marred. But I do have to post this pen as it's too short unposted for me. And because that cap is so heavy, it back weights the pen, which forces me to move my grip up the barrel to balance the pen, which is actually a good thing because it's grippier here than it is on that slippery tapered section. As to the Fude nib, well, it writes the way it's supposed to. It's very wet and you get a huge range of line thicknesses from triple XF to a two millimeter paintbrush. The great thing about this pen is that if you like this pen, you have options because you can swap this uh, nib out uh, for regular nibs uh, for normal writing and use the Fude for Chinese calligraphy or sketching or what have you. The pen is very well built as I found most Hongdian pens are and extremely affordable as it's under $20 US and you can get a set of three of these nibs in XFF and Fude for only 13 bucks. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.